Hey. Hey, man. How we can you? actually we have uh, five minutes, so what we could do is uh, share the screen. And, exactly. Uh, fine. Yeah, I want to do it. So uh, I would rather share the entire screen so easier for our operation. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll, tr so I'll try. Possible. I'll try mine. I'll make sure uh, you're able to see my screen. Uh, so too small. Yeah. Uh, let me maximize my screen. Very small. So I turn off my screen and also my cam. Uh, it doesn't enlarge yours, is it? Yeah, I think. Uh, but you know. people can click try it to uh, maximize it. Yeah. So it means uh, we can advise the people. Uh, well, depends. Let's see. Let's see. Let's uh, play by us. So I'll check with the, if anyone is. Let's ask the people. Okay. If I just share application window. How's it? Does it show properly? No, I'm just asking because whatever we're saying is a little different from whatever people are watching. So uh It'll be a little different. I'll ask. We'll see. So anyone, mm. mm. look like we got a couple of people. Let's see if anyone respond back. Okay. I'll I'll stop sharing for a second. It's actually push that into a presentation mode. It should be good. No. Uh yeah I. Currently, I put it uh, put the share for the application only. So when I put it to presentation mode, I cannot see the yeah, all right, okay. my Chrome. So you tell me. I think it works. Cool, cool, sounds good. Okay. So I keep it this way, and uh, yeah, wait for the people come in. Yeah, two more minutes, right? Yep. And uh, I want to find a way I can show my presentation. I here we go. I get it back. I get back my Chrome in my second second desktop. Let me send you my current setup. Actually, I'm in my bedroom. Not the perfect setup, but I don't want to get bothered by my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I try snap cam, right. which which can bring the virtual background, which, show okay. it as virtual cam. But if we set up our own background, we gotta send it for censorship. They gotta approve it. Okay, not that okay. soon. Interesting. We'll see. I just send you my current setup in a Slack. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just saw Rob. He was. I think. Uh, uh, I think he was getting in. Hello. Hey, uh, Samuel. Uh, time time is up. I think uh, we can start. Right? It's uh, this is the right time. Cool. Yeah, two thirty five. Okay. So let's start. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to uh, our workshop session. Uh, this session we will show 
uh, how we can protect the API workload against OWASP top 10 and some CVE problems. So uh, I'm Samuel, I'm, I'm Nginx a Technical Solution Architect from Hong Kong. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Gadget. I'm an uh, architect. I do a lot of cloud application transformation, app modernization, and a big fan of uh, football. But uh, nowadays, I cannot play, so I just can play it on video game. So, uh, Rajesh? Thank you. Yeah, hey. Thanks. Yeah, we got our domain architect. Please introduce yourself a bit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, hello, everyone in Hong Kong. Uh, this is Rajesh here. I, uh, I live in Melbourne, I live in Melbourne, Australia. I work with uh, Nginx as a solution architect. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Cool. So uh, let's jump in to the discussion. So uh, we all know uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 API exposing in the internet. So we would do it. We would uh, enjoy the API economies. But we also face a lot of attack, and we try to protect it. Uh, let's refer to the OWASP top 10 so we know we can understand what we can uh, protect from. So uh, there are a, a few of uh, them is about the authentication, authorization, and some of them about the data exposure, uh, about the data assignment, asset assignment, and some of them is about the uh, resources and race limit, and some uh, about the cyber attack. So uh, regarding to those attack, what can we do? So uh, we can apply some security policy uh, to handle all those uh, issues. So I think you, you may have a lot of uh, heard a lot of solution already. Uh, how can we do it in a light way and also a, an easy apply uh, strategy? Uh, we will show it today. Uh, how can we fit, uh, accomplish it with Nginx Plus and AppProtect? So uh, what we are going to apply is, uh, first of all, we would uh, have to do the authorization, to do the uh, role-based access control, do the rate limit, and also apply the WAF policy. So this would be. Uh, very essential to help you to protect your app. But how how easy it could be? Uh, let me talk about uh, uh, today's architecture. So uh, that is a very modern architecture. So today demo, we will show it in uh, command prompt. We can show it step by step. Uh, the deployment tools we use is uh, Terraform. It is uh, very popular. Uh, you may use your own, but uh, yeah, it is all I mean, Nginx is very handy. You can automate it. You can deploy it with whatever you want, even shell script. And uh, for the demo today, we, we put it on GitHub. So you can feel free to download and try it. Uh, the GitHub link is uh, at below. So you can capture the screen. You can play it around. So the setup is about uh, we have three API. So uh, each of them has their own uh, load balancer. And uh, we would try to expose to the public internet. And we want to protect it with Nginx as uh, the API gateway. We would uh, apply those security policy on this tiny subnet. But it is very powerful. OK, so what's the scenario? Uh, I mentioned there are three uh, API exposed. Uh, we would expose them uh, as uh, some uh, URL. For example, we will expose uh, the weather uh, and also the F1, Formula 1 uh, information. And we will have uh, our tailor-made uh, Hello World, that is Hello Nginx uh, API. So we have those uh, uh, API ready to expose to the public internet. But we want to get it protected. So what we do is to add Nginx Plus. And what we can, how we can protect it is we can do some uh, precise definition. For example, for, for a weather services, probably we have a lot of services about uh, weather today, a forecast for coming three days, coming a, a week of forecast. And we can do the precise definition to bind it to the exact API we want to expose. We don't need to expose 
everything we have at this moment because sometimes we have some legacy API probably we, we don't know and we don't even have the code uh, to adjust or the the API doesn't it is for internal only we we didn't uh, uh, consider it would be exposed to the public so we didn't put uh, role based access control or do the rate limit doesn't matter we can do it with nginx plus and the next thing we can apply on the nginx plus is at the authentication authorization so uh Rajesh, would you mind showing me how easy it could be to turn this on uh on the nginx Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. That's a good intro. Uh, the architecture here we are trying to use here uh, is to uh, deploy our code uh, Nginx Plus and three uh, microservices. We are trying to expose that as an API and uh, we're going to show you how, how you can easily secure that uh, using Nginx Plus. So just to start with, I'll, st I'll share my screen. Yeah, please. So uh, I hope uh, Sam actually showed uh, the design of how it actually looked like, the way how we, we deployed. So uh, as part of the architecture, we have deployed the Nginx Plus as an API gateway in the edge. So as, uh, Nginx, Play, Nginx Plus as being an API gateway here, it is a very uh, uh, CIC friendly. So uh, the example, what I'm showing here is this is how I have structured my Nginx uh, environment. So this is easier for you to understand where I'm going to apply those policies. For example, you can see that app protect, auth Z and logs, responses, routes and app streams. So those are all the things I will be applying the policies. The policies are very declarative. You can actually you know, configure your CI CD pipeline and push those information straight into those uh, right folder and deploy it. And uh, it's quickly we can uh, bring it up so the next thing what i'm going to show is uh, so for this authorization bit what we have done is uh, we have chosen octa as an idp so octa as an idp where we have configured uh, some of the users and the resource credentials where it will mint the token so we are not relying on a, a homegrown solution we are uh, uh, integrating the nginx plus api gateway with uh, any idp provider which is enabled with the open id connect or oauth 2 so in this particular uh, example we have chosen octa so which is easy to integrate and i will actually walk you through the code how easy it is uh, to actually do that bit so here uh, taking a uh, OpenID connect OIDC underscore OTC conf. So this is the way how you actually define uh, in Nginx. It's very declarative. You can configure this as part of your uh, CI CD pipeline. Uh, so this particular code, uh, what it is going to do is it's actually going to make a call to uh, OpenID connect, Octa's OpenID connect. So let me actually show you an, how it may look like. Uh, a tiny reminder for audience uh, if the screen you want to maximize it you can double click on the on that part of screen it can go larger so what i have done is uh i used the open id connect uh, endpoint uh, configuration from octa so this is my own uh, octa environment uh, this is pretty much exactly how it would work for any idp if you take azure ad if you take uh, ping identity, if you take auth0, if they are OpenID Connect compliant, then they will have an OpenID configuration well-known endpoint. As part of that, all I need uh, for to configure in Nginx Plus is this JWKS URI endpoint and the issuer. These are all the two information I need from here. By clicking on this, what it actually gives is this particular endpoint gives you the public key, which is hosted inside the Okta. The reason for this particular uh, public key uh, to be cached is uh, whenever a token get minted by uh, Okta, it tend to actually sign it with its private key so that the public key can be used to verify whether the token is issued by the right issuer, a trusted issuer, and it's a, a valid uh, token or not. So that is the reason behind this particular configuration. And the other configuration I want to highlight here is, uh, as I mentioned, 
uh, also configured to say that what is who, uh, what is my issuer. So uh, with the previous screen, you would have noticed that. So this is exactly the same screen I'm talking about. Uh, sorry, the issuer, the value. This issuer is the what I'm going to use it. And uh, you can see that I'm also configured Okta to say that to whom I'm going to use it. It's like an audience uh, claim. So within Jot, you will see uh, more and more uh, uh, way of actually defining uh, how this audience claim can be used. So without wasting time, let us actually uh, jump into the core, uh, jump into the test of uh, this one. So just to be clear, uh, the environment, whatever uh, Sam uh, showed uh, in his screen, you can be, you can see that it is possible where you can download the code, the Terraform code, and deploy this whole environment, whatever Sam just you know shared with Nginx Plus at the edge and the three microservices as part of it. It is a, a simple click; you can deploy it. So it's exactly the same code I have used to show it. So uh, what I'm gonna do is um, first thing is I'm going to actually issue a request to Okta saying that I want a token. So this is a request which uh, which will be sent to uh, Okta. It's asking for a, a token. So if you notice it, I uh, will come back to this later, but something I just wanted to highlight here is I have mentioned that I want a scope of admin. Just keep it aside. We will come back to this page. So this the Okta uh, uh, getting the you know basic authorization. It actually get uh, it minted a token. So let's actually inspect how it would it look like. So this is how the the token would look like, uh, as you can see. Um, uh, being highlighted here, the structure of uh, uh, any JAR token issued by any OpenID Connect issuer will look like this. It will have a header, it will have a claim, and it, it gets signed by its own private key. So as, in, as I was uh, explaining, uh, so this is the audience claim I was talking about. So this is the audience which is expected by the Nginx Plus there to verify whether this token is issued for a right intended purpose. And also it has got uh, the scope of admin and to have the permission of admin. Because of the user, it actually, uh, sorry, because because of the scope it has issued the permission of admin we'll come back to that later this has got other claims as well like a subject uh issued at and when it is this is going to expire so now we have the token to play with let's go to the test so before uh we go I have already deployed this code, uh, just didn't want to waste any time, uh, but at least we'll get that uh, feel of that it's being deployed in GCP and get that uh, information out. The G this particular code, Terraform code, will spit the endpoints where we need to test this against. Yeah, there we go. So let us take this F1 API as an example. So, um, I'll actually remove this for a second and I'll try to actually hit this bit. So uh, Nginx Plus is uh, configured, as I mentioned, uh, the Nginx Plus code, the configuration which I actually shared with you guys uh, clearly says that it expects this particular one. If this particular uh, information is not passed, the JOT is not passed with that, it will throw error. It's a very simple configuration which we have done part of it and uh, Nginx Plus through a clear error saying that you need to pass uh, the authorization so let's okay. since we have the token let's copy the token and put it here so this should actually goes through go through the nginx plus environment and then it actually hits the backend uh, service and now we got this button so we clearly you know secured our api only if you have a valid token even though if you have a, 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 a an endpoint you won't be able to hit this api you still have to have a valid uh, token to actually talk to this one so this way it was very clear that it is you know uh, without a right uh, token you won't be able to access this bit so let us actually try one more uh, API, like a hello API.
It's the same bit. When I, if I try, it will say it's forbidden because you have not passed uh, the token. So let me actually get the same JWT token. There you go. So uh, without the token, uh, without the right authorization token in place, you won't be able to access it. So the configuration of this uh, within Engine Express is very, very easy to do that as part of your uh, code. Does it make sense, uh, Sam? Does it? Yeah, uh, you just a few <laughs> take, uh, can make it work. It's just like a magic. Uh, so actually, what did the uh, Rajesh did is. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let's go, go to my screen. So uh, mm -hmm. I just have put Ocker as the um, uh, IDP and then uh, get the API client to get the request for the uh, authentication and then get the access token. Boom, get into the Nginx with the access token. We can uh, authorize the those people to access and we can apply the role base uh, security. We can, yeah. For your 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 example is a uh, weather and AP and F one and yeah. only. That is, this uh -oh. is quite important. Yeah, that's cool. that's quite important one, uh, Sam. Because uh, uh, you you don't want to give access to everyone. Even though you have a valid token, you still have to apply some kind of uh, authorization, like a fine level authorization, to right. the users, saying that uh, who can access which part of API. So. Right. Uh, as, an, as you give an example, I ha we have three APIs, the weather API and F1 API. Only if your role is defined as, a, if your scope is defined as uh, admin, then you will be able to access it. Uh, but if you are actually having user as a scope, you won't be able to access that bit. So I'll show you how actually that works. Uh, we won't use the same token uh, what we uh, what we got earlier because that was uh, that that has the scope of admin. So let us take this. So if you notice it here, I don't have a scope. So it's it's like pretty much like I am not expecting the scope to be an admin. I'm expecting this to be more of a, um, a user scope. So by hitting this, again, we are making a call uh, to Okta without uh, admin scope. Let us actually go and inspect how it looks like. There you go. Right, so you can see the the structure of the token. I hope you can see this, uh, Sam. Uh, mm -hmm. but, yeah. So uh, you can see that the scope is actually uh, just a user uh, because we have not asked for an admin scope. So uh, let us do one thing. Let us take this API. Sorry, the token and. Uh, This should work because this is not expecting the admin scope. In a moment, I will show you the code, how it actually being done. So this should work. So let us go back to uh, the F1 API. F1 API expects the scope to, be, to have uh, the admin in place. So here sending the user scope token shouldn't work. Mm -hmm. there so it won't let you to go forward. That's right. Because the, the token doesn't have the permission of saying that whether it's an admin or a user. So here it doesn't have the scope of saying it's an admin because this particular uh, API, F1 API is coded to say that only allow if the user has a valid token and and the let's actually get here. There we go. And if and check whether the admin uh, uh, is valid or not. If admin is there, then we actually set a value of one. And then inside our route information, we actually check whether the admin is equal to zero. If admin is equal to one, that means it's present in there. It's a very easy uh, if, if then else condition and saying that if admin is ze uh, zero, then throw one error. As you can mm. see that it's it's only done for F1 API and the weather API. Here we are only expecting the uh, token to have uh, the admin permission. But in Hello API, we did we don't have that bit. So it's a very simple configuration where you can actually configure the Nginx Plus as an API gateway to give a different level of authorization even within your environment, within your organization. 
so we even don't need uh, the developer to change their app. No, no not at all. So, uh, so we're having this one. So all the changes will happen in a centralized place like Okta, where you can define what type of scope they want, and then it's easier to assert it in one place. So your services doesn't have to worry about it. So the API gateway will take care of, take care for that for you. Excellent. So we know who is coming in for the API. So could we uh, limit their usage? I mean, like uh, different user can have different resource bandwidth. I don't want the API get abused. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you're more talking about a rate limiting, isn't it? You you wanted to know yeah. how you can apply. Yeah. So that is a, that's a very interesting one because as part of the security, it is quite important to give uh, 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 SLA like you know. Um, uh, uh, user specific security. So here we we saw that it's a role specific. So you can specify what type of role or what type of permission he can have. But here you can also apply a rate limiting that a user can have this much of a rate limit and uh, another user can have a different rate limit in place. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll explain how it actually works from a rate limiting perspective. So again, I'll actually minimize this just to make sure that we understand. So rightly, again, it is very, very simple configuration in, in within Nginx Plus. As you can see here, can you see my screen well? Maybe I'll yeah. just make, I'll, I'll maximize it. Um, as you can see that uh, within Nginx Plus, the directive here is a limit uh, request and uh, uh, I'm doing this based on the customer ID. When I say customer ID, it is actually derived from the JWT token. JWT token will have something called uh, a subject, SUB, and that value will be used as a customer ID here. Uh, here, what I have done is I have configured a 12 request per minute. The way Nginx Plus actually works is, is uh, it's really uh, phenomenal. The way it applies it, it will make sure that you are not uh, exceeding 12 requests per minute. What that means is you can only send one request every five seconds. So it divides it by number of requests by the minutes, uh, seconds. That means you can only send one request per minute. So let's go back. It's a, uh, just to be clear, this is exactly the, you, you can actually change this to uh, uh, any in, any number of it for, just for a demo purpose, I only gave total request for all the APIs. You can change it uh, like, you know, request specific, sorry, API specific rate limit uh, here. So let's go in, let's actually replay the request, what we did. So that works within five seconds, I'm sending an error. So it won't, uh, Nginx Plus will say that now you look like you are a bad actor or maybe you don't have entitlement to actually use this. So I'm not gonna let you in. Uh, so what it will do is it will stop sending the request to the upstream. It protects your upstream services, not being bombarded by your uh, consumers. So only after five seconds, I can send this request. That would work. If I send it immediately, then it will throw an error. So this is highly configurable. You can actually do it uh, in a way if you want, uh, you still wanted to uh, your, cus uh, your customers to have more requests to do it. There is one more, uh, you know, directly called burst, which means you can actually start to say that I'm okay, but I will not honor the SLA. For example, if you see that um, here, the request for a successful request, you can see that upstream latency is 0 0.824. So this particular latency will not be honored. It will say that, okay, now I'm going to actually slow down your request. It will actually throttle it, throttle saying that I'm not going to let you. But here in the demo, I didn't put in the place. It is a zero or one, whether I'm going to allow you or not allow you. So in this case, if I tr keep trying it, it will work. The next one won't work. I have to wait for five seconds minimum to make sure that it is actually uh, 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 able to do the next request. It's the same for all other APIs as well. So with Nginx Plus, a field configuration, hook it up with an IDP like Okta, we can settle authorization of an occasion, the data exposed, and rate limiting. That's right. Cool. How about those uh, uh, cyber attack? How can we fix it? 
well that is a that's a very interesting one uh, because uh, the vulnerabilities are uh, a little higher uh, uh, degree than what we are just uh, seen there are uh, known uh, bad actors in place where they try to attack your apis they make sure that they will try to bring by executing a shell script or maybe even executing a sql script as part of your uh, api endpoint and they will try to steal the information out uh, uh, we have a product called uh, nginx app protect it is a dynamic module a module which sits on top of nginx plus without compromising the lightweight without compromising the speed of nginx plus without compromising the ease of using we still actually apply a similar kind of a policy like a waf policy within nginx so uh, uh, let's take an example here um would it change a lot in my architecture? I heard there is just uh, one API gateway. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. No, it does not change your architecture at all. It is exactly the same way. As I mentioned, this is an external dynamic module where you can actually install it as part of Nginx Plus. It's just an another dynamic module as part of Nginx Plus. So you don't need to change any architecture. All is it's just an add-on to your Nginx Plus. Excellent. So uh, we have some uh, something in our mind about uh, what to protect, like as you mentioned, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, mm HTTP -hmm. uh, protocol validation, uh, custom block uh, response, uh, and some resource location. Would you mind showing us how can it be done? Yeah, I, I even want it to be locked. I I want it to be blocked. I want it to be locked in my in my record. Okay, so uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, vulnerability which we see in the in the in the wide is uh, people tend to actually send a JavaScript as part of the query parameter and they try to execute while making the call. So if you do not protect your API workloads against that kind of uh, script execution, the script will get executed within your application or if if your if your applications are not up to date or if your applications have some kind of a vulnerabilities that uh, let you to uh, let to you know uh, the endpoints to execute the shell script, shell script or some kind of a JavaScript, it will be much more dangerous. So I'll show you an example here. So here, what I'm trying to do is I didn't. Uh, I'm just trying to pass uh, an endpoint. Uh, I might, I might need a a new token now. Probably that would have got expired. So let me. Cut the token. So here in this particular example, we are talking about uh, a, a script a, a script that get executed. So here in the request, as part of the request, a bad actor would actually send you uh, a script here by saying that execute this uh, when the request is gone. So if you don't have a right policy, ABAF policy in place, then this particular script may get executed. So here uh, I have enabled the Nginx app protect the VAF policy as part of the Nginx Plus. So now you're making the call, uh, the nginx plus will stop you there right away saying that no this is not good this request doesn't look good something is fishy about this particular endpoint so because it has some, uh, you know a script which is trying to uh, you know do something which is we are, i'm not expecting it to do that so what it has done is it actually stopped it and saying that there is some violation and this is the support id so talk to your uh, uh, the support team and figure out what is the problem i'm not going to reveal you because it may give much more information to the attacker so the configuration for this is very, very easy. Again, uh, we talked about the app, app protect thing. So what I have done is uh, I just wrote a simple uh, WAF policy here to say like a block settings for, uh, as you mentioned, Sam, for a HTTP violation and evasion violation and uh, even for the JSON format and uh, for the threat campaign. So this can be ex easily extended to a next level. But here uh, I have gone with a very, very simplistic example. And you talked about uh, a block response as well, a custom block response. So whatever response you're seeing here, 
this particular work response is actually constructed by our nginx plus here saying that you have some violation detail and what type of uh, response header you wanted to send which is a 403 or 429 whatever you wanted to send as part of it and then uh, respond back uh, from this nginx app protect as you can see the the configuration is exactly the same way how uh, it would work for nginx plus so you're not going to learn anything new it is it's exactly same uh, directives you will be applying as similar kind of directive with a different naming convention and apply that as part of your nginx plus api gateway so this is the other examples uh, i only enabled this policy so there are other policies you can apply like uh, api security policies where you can start to say that uh, you want a mandatory request as part of the body and uh, any parameter locations violation so you can actually this is extensively uh well uh driven uh this is borrowed from uh, the fi side of the world where it is pioneer in doing this kind of a waf policy using its uh, top notch uh, awaf and the silver line products uh, so this is to actually have uh, nginx plus has you know taken the subset of that and try to apply similar kind of policy closer to the applications so it's a pretty uh, pretty extendable for you you can actually achieve it in a different way yeah it sounds not a uh, simple waf it is like an advanced WAF. That is correct. Yes, because it's uh, the advanced WAF uh, policy is actually, you know, that's a subset of the so advanced WAF is what we are actually using it here. Mm. Just oh. to just to help our Nginx uh, community to actually, you know, apply a top notch security so that it's easy for them to protect their a API workloads. Yeah, I believe uh, inherit from F5, the signature and the experience of uh, on the uh, threat protection would be great. Absolutely, yes, because uh, the FI is a pioneer in that, right? So they actually, you know, uh, they uh, well uh, invested, they have well, uh, you know, uh, go and inspect the world uh, with whatever threat, threats it's happening now, and it actually bring it immediately to protect their customers. So Nginx plus Nginx being part of FI, it is easier for us to adapt to the same nature and apply similar, similar level of security posture within the API gateway too. Excellent. So can this uh, the lock can export to any other systems because for example my customer will have integrate with uh, service now and Gofrena. very good question so I'll, uh... So you can actually even define the format how the how the log should come in. I'll, in a moment, I will show you uh, how that is done. So here as an example, I can show you that uh, currently for this particular demo, I'm writing this into a local uh, uh, file system within this particular uh, location, like a security.log. You, there are multiple ways where you can run uh, um, like a log stash or a fluent D where you can funnel that data to wherever you want it to for Splunk or to uh, or Elasticsearch or wherever you want it to. Or you can actually configure the app protect logs to send it to a syslog. So in this case, syslog can be sent it to a, a, a configurable Elasticsearch instance as well, which is very much easy. It's out of the box. All you have to do is to create the right syslog uh, host name and the port number, then all the information, all the logs, which I'm about to show you, will will be funneled through uh, to either to ELK or to uh, any log collector, Splunk, uh, any log collector in, of your choice. Does that make sense? Uh, as it as answer your question? Yeah, totally. I mean, you just turn something <laughs> troublesome into very easy fields that can settle the thing. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to actually show you a, a, a demo, uh, like a, a log as well. So give me one second. That's uh... sure. Maybe we'll come back to that later. Let's uh, let, let it load up. It's just trying to show how the logs would look like uh but no for problem. now let's start to talk about uh, what's what's next oh uh, there are a few questions coming in but we will answer it in a, in a moment uh but uh, let's let's go through with that chun has asked some question there yeah i think uh with the WAF policy deployed that is around <clears throat> yeah almost the the 
all materials we prepare for today, and we yes. can show the log out later. And uh, yeah, let's check those uh, questions. Uh, so actually, uh, the other uh, example which I wanted to uh, uh, show here as well is about this is an, another attack which is popular uh, in the wild where people tend to send uh, some kind of a, a shell script command as part of the query param where they try mm. to you know even cat the password. This is more of a, a predictable resource location. So they tend to actually, you know, since it, if it is running in Windows, then you can execute a Windows command. If it's running in a Linux, excuse me. They can uh, uh, run a Linux command to do it. If your system is uh, vulnerable, then it may send those information back to the caller. So, uh, which is just not a good idea. So, Nginx Plus again, uh, NAP enabled and Nginx Nginx Plus can help you out here quite easily to uh, you know mitigate this problem. So, let us take uh, this example once again. Let's throw uh, a light into this one. So again, if I if I hit a weather API and then with with those things, it will clearly you know stop the error saying that you are not go because there is something fishy about your request. I'm not actually going to uh, you know forward you with this bit. So this is an, another example we wanted to show you. So one more example I wanted to show you, um, Sam, is mm -hmm. uh, this. Jason. So oh. uh, this is this is more of a. This is more of a, a people tend to even sometimes send, try to send a SQL script SQL as part of their request. So which is a, which is a, again it is it is popular in the wild. People tend to send you know some kind of a, a select statement or some kind of a, you know a statement as part of a union statement as part of their query param, but they can get more than what they should be getting. So these are all the you know uh, a known uh, issue as part of uh, anybody who's trying to steal your information. So as you can see here, as an example, I'm trying to query the weather, but also I'm trying to add uh, some SQL injection to that. I have an error there. Throwing error, this won't let you to move forward either. So it will clearly stop any cross-site cross, uh, cross -site scripting. It will stop any predictable resource location uh, hit or any SQL injection is being part of your query parameter. Will definitely, it won't let you to go if you enabled the NAP uh, policy as part of it. So there are a couple of things you can do as part of your uh, request. Is you can see that in the custom policy, I have made this in you know enforcement mode as uh, blocking, where I say that uh, you can actually change this to a alarm as well, where it actually does not block you. Here it actually stops you, but you can choose not to block it, which is not a good idea in my opinion. But uh, there are some customers tend to you know try that without a blocking as well, uh, more more on a different enforcement mode. Does that help you, uh, Sam? Yeah, and as I know, AppProtect has uh, a very all-round uh, security feature support. And uh, yeah, I would say we have a whole list, but I'm not going to go through one by one. It, it is available on our website. So like attack signature, that campaign. That's, that's actually a good that. point. Let us actually show them the thing as well, the Nginx. Uh, as part of this nginx.com, you should be able to see this uh, documentation here, where you can go and see all type of uh, you know configuration guide, what type of uh, you know signature it actually does it, what type of policy confirmation, what type of open API. So we also do open API specification validation, so you can uh, you can configure that as part of uh, the nginx app product, and you can also do a threat campaign as well. So for example, if you are running Java six or Java five, the old version of a language and uh, which is well known for some kind of a threat in the in the vector then you can actually you know enable uh, the threat campaign as well which is a really good one which we highly recommend for anyone who is running uh, old versions of uh, programming language in the wild so uh, i would i would strongly recommend you guys to you know have a look into this one how you can you know have a high accuracy uh, signatures you can apply to your workloads to protect your workloads wonderful so as a summary, what we have did uh, in the demo is uh, we show uh, how to add the authorization, how to do the authentication, role basis okay. control, limit, and also we show uh, how to use uh, Nginx app protect for some WAF policy. And 
Yeah, I, I would say, is there any question from... Uh, from... So, there are a couple of questions which I just noticed. One is from Chun. Yeah. Uh, is the attack signature detected in both request and query string and payload? Yes, absolutely. So just for a, a, a easiness, I actually made sure that this is only in the query param, but it can be actually you know verified as part of uh, your body as well JSON property because we support Open API spec as part of uh, this particular bit. So you can actually go and say that it's uh, ma making sure that it is not violating the Open API spec as part of it, and you can detect that as well. Just for the ease of a demo, I chose to do that in a query param. Uh, uh, Luca, Luca Ma, uh, is asking, support how is ID. the support ID generated and tracked? That's a good question. So the support, so that's what I wanted to show you. That's right in a time. So uh, let's actually go on the table. Remember, I actually configured this. So uh, with an Nginx, I have configured this as part of uh, the log file which is emitted within the system just for the demo purpose. As I mentioned, you can push this to one of your uh, log collector system or wherever you're monitoring, you can easily funnel this using log stash or uh, a Fluentd or you know even syslog uh, even job where you can push this to bit. So as part of this, it clearly actually says that uh, what type of violation it actually comes and it also gives with the signature ID what signature ID it comes uh, So it will have all those information what type of uh, you know client IP address and stuff So you could use this information to actually you know retro uh, retrofit back with all the requests uh, you're seeing through it I hope that answers uh, Luca. Let's wait for any other question. Do you do it? Uh... So uh, I I know uh, our demo is on uh, GCP uh, with uh, the VM. Uh, as I know, the engine express can apply on uh, a lot of other platform like bare metal like container uh i mean in your experience how easy it could be deployed with all those things because we are talking about uh devops we're talking about automation would it be troublesome if we do a lot of such automation with nginx plus uh, so that's a very good question so nginx is well known for this one they they actually made uh uh we, we have made this very easy friendly friendly with all the cacd pipeline in place as i note as i showed you all this configuration is quite easy to actually you know configure as part of your jenkins or Bitbucket or what uh, uh with the github and all the tools in place and it's easy to configure uh, as part of your um uh uh, CACD pipeline in place. Having said that, uh, you also talked about where can I deploy it. Uh, Nginx is a completely a cloud agnostic. The example what I showed was with uh, with the GCP, but you can take this code and exactly deploy the same structure, same code in AWS or Azure or any cloud or even the on-prem one to make sure that it's actually running. So we, we don't actually, uh, you know, stick with oh, just a one single cloud. You, you can you can deploy it anywhere you want, even uh, on uh, on-prem uh, bad metal machines. So how can we? Does it support uh, like HADR? Absolutely, yes. It it uh, by nature it actually supports uh, HA uh, clearly, so it is easier for you to synchronize. Even in HA environment, the biggest challenge for a lot of uh, other tools is relying on a different state to store this thing. Uh, Nginx is uh, well, you know, well uh, known in this particular pick where it can synchronize the information with the proprietary way without uh, depend on third uh, third system or third party system. So it is it, by nature it is uh, HA enabled. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this HA features is uh, available on uh, Nginx Plus only. So uh, I don't mean open source is not good, but yeah, it depends on different usage. 
That is actually a good point you raised, uh, 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 Sam. Yes, you're right. It is actually uh, it is it's only available uh, within a Plus. Uh, the open source gives quite a lot. We have, we we have we have open sourced since 2003 once we came into the wild, right? So with the Nginx Plus gives uh, comes up with a different approach where you can enable the Nginx App Protect, where you can apply more and more security policies, as I just showed, which you can't do it with open source. Open source is more a little more limited <coughs> with the Plus. It's more security focused. Excuse me. No problem. Yeah, I, I find the rate limiting the JWT you used the access token is very very handy. It can integrate with a few configuration, kick it off in like ten minutes. That is correct. Yeah. So this particular code uh, is already available in GitHub. So. You guys can actually you know download it and you can literally run this in, a, in an environment i have example of running this in gcp but it can be also run this run the same code uh in uh, azure or aws as well so it's exactly the same setting you don't have to change much on this sure let me show the page again <laughs> so yeah you guys can uh, take a screenshot for this and uh, try it yourself actually we, we should uh yeah that's a that's a github rep repo uh, on the on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. All right. Have, uh, anything uh, else? Let's see. So in case if they want. So this is exactly the same code which I used today to uh, to run the session. So feel free to use it. Cool. Excellent. So wait for any other questions, if any. So a couple of good questions came. It came through. How are, uh, we, are, we, are we still in time? Um, are we? It is three twenty. Okay. How's our section? Yeah, we are almost almost there. Cool. Uh, so uh, if there is any question, yeah, please feel free to uh contact us and uh come to our booth. We have uh. Starbucks if gift card to give away, take a simple survey can do this. So uh, thanks, Josh. So if I you, hope. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. So if if any one of you wanted to uh, dig into more, if you want to know more about this bit, so uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we are happy to help anytime. Oh, we got one more one more question. So can, can we use this feature rate limiting app protect in Nginx controller? That's a fantastic question. That's actually. I almost forgot it. So what I showed uh, here is, uh, is uh, how manually you go on to do this with the Nginx Plus. So we have a product called uh, Nginx Controller. So Nginx Controller is a product which actually helps you to configure all this uh, and manage this through the controller, which is uh, we, we have separated the data plane and control plane using the controller. So pretty much you can make an API call to the controller and you can do all of this, whatever I just showed you through controller into the data plane. So you can configure this uh, rate limiting, you can uh, you know configure this app protect as well as uh, through the controller where you can you know have a, a complete API management solution as part of it. You can manage uh, the load balancer as well as part of the controller and the API gateway uh, to uh, with this with this with this Nginx controller. Thank you very much, Sukran. It's actually I almost forgot to uh, highlight the, that bit. So that's another pro other product which you know helps you to manage your life cycle quite easily uh, as part of uh, of part of your organization. Maybe you'll wait for a minute or two, otherwise we'll, we'll wrap it up. I think after a very long time, uh, we uh, we finished the demo within time. I always, uh, when I do the demo, it, I, uh, I go over the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right then, let's uh, let's wrap yeah. it up. 
so if you again if you guys need any any help uh, or any any input from us please reach us reach us out really follow us on linkedin facebook twitter and uh, yeah we can discuss okay thanks for your time thank you everyone thank okay. you yes ciao Bye.